Okay, so the final thing that we're going to learn for this unit is we're going to learn about how to use our calculator to, um, number one, give us the best, remember, so we talked about how, so we've been playing around in class with finding the best equation. So we've been playing around with, like, adjusting the slope and adjusting the y-intercept. This will help us figure out how to actually have the calculator tell us the best equation that we can make. So I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to do it together, um, and then um, we'll practice it a lot in class. Okay, so first of all, um, I'm in the Desmos calculator, so I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to click hit table. And I'm in the Texas calculator, um, the Texas star calculator, because I'm in Texas and we take star. Okay, so now that I've made that table, I'm going to go ahead and type in the values that, I, th that are in this table. So you take a moment and do that. I will take a moment and do that. And between the two of us, we should get this stuff entered. I'm going to enter in all the X's because, well, look at that. And see, notice how once I started entering them and it found the pattern, um, I could do that, so go me. Um, 17. If you need to pause to get these entered, that's fine. It's 56. Okay, so I've got my numbers entered. Now, this is really important, and this is not something that everybody always thinks to do, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I always do this because you have to make sure that what you have typed matches. Because a lot of times, like... If, it, if you get something a little bit misaligned, it's going to completely change the equation that you get. Okay, So I'm just going to briefly take a look and see that my x and y values are lined up with what I was supposed to enter, and they are. Okay, So now, I can actually, if I want to, I can look at these points. I can kind of zoom out, in theory, <laughs> and see these points. There you go. See, I zoomed out, and now I can see the points that they gave me. Okay, So... That's nice. And I could play around. I could put, you know, y equals x. I could make a line. Okay, I need it to be steeper than that. Let's say I want, let's say, 0.5x. That's not steep enough. How about 0.25x? That's a little too steep. How about 0.3x? Let's do point. 35x. Nope, that's too far. 32. Again, I can play with this line. Um, and it looks like also like if I zoom in a little bit here, like maybe I need to shift it up. I don't know. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I need to make it. So I could kind of manipulate, play with it, and try to get a line that works. Or I could get the calculator to do that for me. Okay, so I'm going to show you what you would type in to make that happen. Now, this is really important. This is on the notes. What you're going to do is you've entered them. You're going to go to a blank row, and you're going to type Y1. Now, notice when I write Y1, it automatically goes into, it makes it a subscript. Now, you're going to use the tilde key, which on your keyboard, it, on my keyboard, it's right here. It's like shift and the button above tab. So shift, the, the, the accent mark, I don't know. On your little um, pop-up keyboard thing here, it is, okay, I think you have to click on something to get to it. You have to click the ABC button. And, oh my gosh, what the heck, where is it? Oh, and then, I don't, oh yeah, there it is, right there. Sorry about that, right there. Um, so you have to hit the ABC button if you're using that, the keyboard, or, or you can use Shift and the button above Tab. All right, so, and then I'm going to do, so I've got Y1. Why did I pick Y1? Because y, that's the heading that I have in this table here. If that said Y2, I'd put Y2 there. So whatever the Y value is up here, that's the Y value I put down there. Now, I'm going to put in slope-intercept form. Okay, M for slope, X. Which X do I have up here? I have X1, so I'm going to put X1. And then I'm going to do plus B. So notice, I did Y equals MX plus B, but I used, instead of the equal sign, I used this, this tilde, which is that, that like kind of like squiggly, the squiggly minus sign. And instead of X and Y, I used y, X1 and Y1. Now, when you do that, you're going to see this information. You can kind of see it over here, but I'm going to kind of, and, and you can see it graphing the points. So do you see how it goes to those lines pretty well? Um, so what does this tell me? Okay, so it gives me a bunch of really, really useful information. Okay, so the first thing it tells me is it tells me my slope and my y-intercept. So I could use this to write an equation. So it says m is 0 0.35, 325714, and b is negative 1.28571. And I was actually pretty close. Remember I had y, y equals 0.32x? I thought maybe I needed to shift a little bit. I barely had to shift at all. 
but I was pretty dang close to go me. So I can make a prediction. Um, so if I wanted to write this as an equation, I would say y equals 0.325714x, and this is a negative b, so I'd say minus 1.28571. And I could graph that line, and it would be this one. If I, if I chose to graph that, I'm not going to, but if I chose to graph that myself, I could. Okay? Um, you will be asked about this when you actually, um, when you, on STAR and on your unit test. So make sure that you know how to do this part. Now, there's another thing here, this R value right here. So let's talk about what this R value means. Okay? So the R value, let me minimize this, the R value is called the correlation coefficient. Big words. And what that means is, here's what the R value means. It tells us how strong the relationship is between these two variables. Okay? So first thing you have to know, R value is always going to be a value between negative 1 and positive 1. So it only goes from negative 1 to positive 1. If you see like 1.8 R value, it's not an R value. Okay? Because R value goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay? Now, um, the R value gets stronger as it moves away from 0. So like as it moves closer to, to negative 1 and it moves closer to positive 1, it becomes stronger. So this sign up here, the sign of the R value, tells me whether I have a positive or negative correlation, meaning is the line going uphill or is the line going downhill? So for this one, I have a positive correlation. For this one, I have a negative correlation. Okay? And the closer it is to the outside, the stronger it is. Okay? So any R value bigger than 0.7, so this right here, is negative 0.7, and that right there is positive 0.7. Anything from negative 0.7 to negative 1, or positive 0.7 to positive 1, we consider that to be strong. Okay? And so then anything in between here, so anything from negative 0.7 to positive 0.7, anything between there and close between there, or closer to zero, we would consider that to be weak. So what does that mean? Okay, well let me tell you what that means. Um, that means how close are the dots together? Because remember, think about it. Remember when we were back here and we were drawing, we were trying to draw these trend lines? Like, this one was a little easier. This one was kind of tricky because the dots weren't very close together, okay? Um, same with, the, this one was, was pretty easy, but like the further apart the dots are, the harder it is to figure out what the relationship is, okay? So, we actually categorize those, those as strong, weak, or perfect, okay? So, this right here would be considered a perfect correlation. Okay, perfect correlations are not real world, okay? Because the world is not perfect. Like, I'm never going to have, like, like every baby born is, every, every baby that is 21 inches long is 13 pounds. Like, that doesn't happen. Babies, like, there's variability in real life. That's why we have scatter plots, because they're based on real world data, and real world data is not perfect. So you are not going to see a perfect correlation. It is just not a real thing. But if you did, every single point that you graphed would be on that line. So every single dot you graphed would be on the equation of the line that, um, that you get when you do your regression. Okay, and by the way, I, I don't know if I said it, but what we're doing here is called linear regression, and that's how we find that line of best fit. Okay, so this one is perfect. Now this one, these dots are pretty close together, so that's good. I would call this a strong correlation, and in this case, it's positive, but if it was going downhill, it would be strong negative. Okay, and strong means dots are close together. Okay. And for this one, I would call this weak. Because I can see, I can see that it's positive, but the dots are scattered. Okay? So the more scattered the dots are, the, le the, the weaker the correlation is. The more compact the dots are, the closer they are to your trend line, the stronger your correlation is. Okay? So let's think about what these R values mean. Just take a second, pause the screen. I want you to tell me what you think these R values would mean. Just jot down what you think they are. Be prepared to erase. Okay. So first of all, 
I can tell by looking at the sign whether they're positive or negative. And since these are R values, we're looking at linear. Right now, we're looking at linear. Okay. Well, let's look at let's let's talk about the sign first of all. This is negative. This is negative. This one's going to be positive. Negative. Positive. Positive and no sign. Okay. Now, if I look at the number. Remember, when we talked about that number, it's going to be a number between negative 1 and positive 1. Well, are there any of these that can't be R values? Well, these two can't be R values because R is between negative 1 and positive 1. So those two can't, those two aren't R values. They're automatically out of the running. We can't even think, they, they, they're, they're not R values. R values cannot be calculated. Bigger than 1 less than negative one, okay? So let's look at this, negative. So is this strong or weak? Well, my table here says that anything from 0.7, anything between 0.7 and one or negative 0.7 and negative one is strong. Well, this is strong because negative 0.84 is between negative 0.7 and negative, um, and negative one. Technically, so is this. It's barely strong, but it's strong. Because it's negative point seven, it's between it's from negative point seven to one, negative one. This one is weak, and so what that means is when I look at the dots, it's going to be like I'll see them kind of going uphill, but they'll be like scattered all over the place. Okay, this one here, I'll see dots going downhill, and I'll kind of be able to see the patterns for both of these. Okay, likewise, this one here, this is between seven point seven and one, so this is going to be positive strong. So that would kind of be more like lines that look a little bit more cl closely clustered together. And zero, this is weak. I mean, this is no correlation. I wouldn't even say weak. This is no correlation. No correlation at all. Okay. And I'm not sure that this is actually a real world thing either. I don't think you can have exactly zero in the real world either because that would have to be like some kind of pattern. Like anyway, so I don't think you can have zero. But I could be wrong on that and I will find more information out. Um, that is all I have for you.